بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد My brothers and sisters Yesterday we spoke about the best person to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the name is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu we had not completed some of what we intended to make mention of so inshallah we will start this evening by completing that and I think we owe him that him being the best of those who treaded this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as we had made mention when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had intended to migrate from Mecca to Medina his companion was actually Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu his companion was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And this was something that was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was really a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Remember we said when he accepted Islam, his net worth was 40,000 silver coins. We need to understand the day he made the migration with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was only worth 5,000 silver coins. So from 40,000 silver coins all the way down to 5,000 in a short space of time. And one of the main reasons was he spent this money. He spent this money freeing the slaves that were reverted to Islam or that had converted to Islam who were being persecuted by the non-Muslims. So he would purchase them and at the same time he would then free them. And this is where the bulk of his money went. May Allah's peace be upon him. Then we have the same man who became the father-in-law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He became the father-in-law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the marriage of his daughter Aisha radiallahu anha to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So not only was he the companion, the first to accept the call of Islam from amongst the men, but he was also the father-in-law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he was two years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was an incident in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein him and Aisha radiallahu anha, they were talking in the house in Medina Munawwara. And Aisha radiallahu anha was speaking quite loudly. It seemed like they were quarreling. And Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu happened to be passing the home. So he enters the, the house after seeking permission and he immediately began to admonish his daughter. How dare you speak like this to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How dare you raise your voice in this quarreling sort of attitude? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came between the two of them and he defended his wife. And he said, do not speak to her in this way. And Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu looked at the two of them and went away. Obviously, he was asked in a nice way without making mention of those words, you know, to leave. Basically, he left. And a little while later, he passed the house once again and he heard her laughing in happiness. So he knocked again on the door and he asked for permission to go back in. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was given permission and he said the famous statement. He said, allow me to participate in your joyous moment just like I was made to participate in the moment of quarreling a few moments back. Amazing. And from this we learn something interesting, that the fathers of those who gave their daughters in marriage to others, actually trained their own daughters as to how to speak to their own husbands. Today, the difficulty is neither does the husband know how to speak to his wife, nor does the wife know how to speak to the husband. And at the same time, if the parents get involved, they do not look at who is right or wrong. They just look at who is related to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are better than what we actually are. Then another incident during the life of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, which is worth making mention of, is the fact that he forgave a lot. He learned to forgive people and he was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the most difficult moment to forgive and embrace. Let's take a look at what happened. It was the incident where his daughter Aisha, bint Siddiq radiallahu an, she was accused being the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of adultery by the hypocrites of Medina. Na'udhu billah, may Allah safeguard all of us not only from being accused but even from accusing others. And what happened is, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was quite hurt. But Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was even more hurt because it's his own daughter. And he had given her to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in marriage. And he knew that she was clean of this particular accusation. But one of his relatives, a poor man whom he used to spend a lot of money on, happened to spread the tale. He did not invent the tale. All he did was spread the rumor, going around telling people, did you hear the latest? Did you hear what happened? And he would say the tale that this is what happened. That was so harmful for him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of it in the Quran that those who spread the tale will also receive a portion of the punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu became so upset that he swore an oath. What was the oath? He said, Wallahi, I will never spend on this relative of mine again. I'm giving him money. I'm looking after him. And on top of that, this is what he gives me in return. So verses were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these verses are read to this day in Surah An-Nur regarding Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an and the oath that he made against Mistah ibn Athatha radiallahu an. وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُولُو الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah is praising Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu on one hand by calling him ulul fadli wa sa'ati from amongst those who are virtuous and those who have been granted sustenance by Allah. Allah says those who are virtuous from amongst you should not swear an oath not to spend on those who are relatives and those who have made hijrah and those who are poor for indeed they should forgive and embrace for the sake of Allah. Don't you want to be forgiven by Allah? Indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. The lesson we learn from this, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu immediately said, I will compensate the oath that I made and I will definitely start spending on this man again. He did not doubt. He did not flinch. He did not blink. Immediately he said, no problem. The man has hurt me. He hurt my family. The man has spread rumor about my family members in a way that it harmed me. But because Allah has instructed me that if I want forgiveness, I must learn to forgive others. I have forgiven him completely and I will continue to spend on him. This was the man, the best of those who treaded this earth after the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. May we all learn a lesson, my brothers and sisters, when we do not forgive those who have wronged us, and really they have wronged us. Sometimes we know that they are the ones who are wrong. Sometimes holding it in us is actually a burden that affects us much more than it affects them. Sometimes to release it would actually mean Allah would look at us with the eye of mercy and he would forgive us too. So let's learn from Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. This was something amazing. Another very, very interesting story was that during just prior to the battle of Tabuk, when the Muslimin were gathered and the Prophet Sallallahu was collecting wealth in order to prepare the army to go to Tabuk and Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu had spent the most in this particular battle in terms of quantity. So quantity wise, nobody could compete with Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. But if you look at percentage wise, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu came in with wealth. And he was so happy that day because there was competition in goodness. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that if you want to compete with one another, you compete with one another in doing good deeds, not in materialistic items. So this was to spend in the cause of Allah. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, today I'm going to beat Abu Bakr, which means I will be spending more than him this day. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, what did you spend? What have you left for your family members? He said, O oh Messenger, I have left half of my wealth for them. 
And he was happy because he made a dua to Allah, Ya Allah, accept it from me. And in his heart, he said, today I will have spent more than Abu Bakr because I have spent 50% of all my wealth. And later comes along Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Abdullah ibn Uthman, radiallahu an. He comes along and he says, here is what I have to donate for this particular battle, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks him, O Abu Bakr, what have you left for your family? And he says, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have left Allah and his Messenger, subhanallah. Which means this is 100% of my wealth. I've put it in front here, 100%. What we are going to have for the next meal, Allah will provide, no problem. Subhanallah. Look at the conviction the man had. This was the best of those to tread the earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One narration says that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu will be the first to enter Jannah from amongst the men of my ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entry into Jannah at least. We know he will be the first to enter paradise from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to a narration reported by Abu Dawood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really be pleased on all of us. That is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. Then when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fell ill, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he fell ill, a lady had come to him asking him something. And he asks the woman to come back to him the following year. So she asks him, what if I don't find you next year? Immediately he said, if you don't find me, you will come to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. This was a very clear cut evidence that he was to be the leader and the Khalifa. He was the first Khalifa, the first successor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No debate about it. Inshallah, we will get to that in a few moments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Also when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so ill that he did not come out for salah during the end of his life, they came to him, the, the companions, and they told him, O Messenger, peace be upon him. They said, are you coming out for salah? He said, ask Abu Bakr to lead the congregation. A little while later, they came back to look for him. O Messenger, are you coming out for salah? He said, ask Abu Bakr to lead the congregation. A third time, he said, ask Abu Bakr to lead the congregation. And that is when this man, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, led the congregation. Now you and I know, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught us that the leader of the congregation should be the one who has the most knowledge of the Qur'an. The one who has the greatest of knowledge of the Qur'an in terms of its meanings, its translation, as well as its recitation and so on. And here was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu being appointed in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as an imam. The only man who was appointed in that particular way to lead this farad salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand the rank of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. As we said, his name is Abdullah ibn Uthman radiallahu anhu. Then when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed away, and he was buried in the house that he had passed away in, and that was the house of the daughter of, or the room of the daughter of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Umar ibn al-Khattab, who had passionate love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, got up, and uttered the famous statement that if anyone says that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has died, I will execute him. I don't want to hear that word. He hasn't passed away. This was the love that he had for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the only man who could educate them once again was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Calm and clement. What did he say? He rose above and he says, Ayyuhan nas, O people, let me remind you, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever was worshipping Muhammad, may peace be upon him, he has indeed passed on. And whoever was worshipping Allah, Allah is ever living, everlasting. Wa man kana ya'budu allaha, fa inna allaha hayyun la yamut. And then Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu read the verses that were revealed. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ 
ومن ينقلب على عقبيه فلن يضر الله شيئا وسيجزي الله الشاكرين these verses reminding the muslimin that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed none but a messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most noble of creation a messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the verses continue to say if he were to pass on or if he were to be killed then would you turn on your backs whoever turns on their backs would definitely not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. And this is when the companions who were all crying at the time, they say that it is as though we heard this verse for the first time. We were so fortunate to be reminded of it by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. When it came to the pledging of allegiance at Saqifah to Bani Sa'idah, which is a place just outside Al-Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina Munawwara, up to this day, it is actually there. If you'd like to see it, they would show you where exactly the place was. This is where some of the Ansar had gathered in order to appoint a successor to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what happened is, they were trying to appoint Sa'ad ibn Ubadah radiallahu an as their leader. And when Quraysh or the Muslimin from Quraysh, the Muhajireen, had come to hear of this, they made haste to Saqifah to Bani Sa'idah. And they began to explain to the Ansar that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has explained to us quite clearly that the Khilafah should be within Quraysh, that this succession should actually be within Quraysh. And Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu is the one who had the explanation of note. And he is the one who convinced them that, do you know what? The succession should actually be amongst the people of Quraysh. Here is Umar ibn al-Khattab. Here are the others. Let us appoint one of them. And at that juncture, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was the man. He was the man who actually said, no, it is Abu Bakr whom we pledge our allegiance to. Is he not the one whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had actually put forth in the congregational prayer to be led by him whilst the messenger was actually ill? Is he not the one whom the messenger had mentioned his virtue and so on? And so much of the virtue was made mention of. And this is when the pledge of allegiance was for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. The first, the first of the successors of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that time, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he was not only a khalifa as a successor, but he also used to judge in the disputes of the people. This was the man. And he used to seek the help of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu a lot. So he was also known as the judge from amongst the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. That was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. When it came to his own sickness, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, in his life, he has achieved a lot. In fact, the entire Arabian Peninsula, more or less the entire Arabian Peninsula, fell under his leadership and under his authority during his life in the two years that he had led. When he fell ill, he called the companions and he started asking them, who do you think should be a successor after me? And they gave their opinions and then they said, look, we trust your opinion. You are the one who should decide. And he began asking more questions and so on until he got hold of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an and told him, I want you to write the following down. Write down that myself being Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an who is the Khalifa of the Muslimin after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I appoint upon my demise Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu as the leader of the Muslims. And th the people should follow Umar after I depart. This was an instruction written by Uthman ibn Affan, but instructed by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu at the end of his life. And he was ill for a short period of time. And then he passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. He was buried next to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He also died at the age of 63. He was two years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away at the age of 63. And two years later, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu passed away at the age of 63. Let us quickly make mention of his family members. He had six children, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, from four wives. His first wife was Qutayla binti Abdul Uzza, who bore for him Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr. 
and Asma binti Abi Bakr radiyallahu anhuma. Thereafter he married Umm Ruman who was the mother of Aisha radiyallahu anha and Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr radiyallahu anh. And after that Asma binti Umais who bore for him Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Imagine he named one of his own children Muhammad. And this was known as Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr as Siddiq radiyallahu anh. And if you look at Asma binti Umais radiyallahu anha, she was such a blessed woman. She was married to Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. But when he was martyred in the battle, Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiyallahu anhu married her. And after Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiyallahu anhu passed away, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu married the same woman, Asma binti Umais, a blessed Sahabiya companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiyallahu anhu had also married Habibah binti Kharija. Some of them named her Mulaika uh, binti Kharija, but the most common name is Habibah binti Kharija al Ansariya. She was from amongst the people of Medina Munawwara. She bore for him Umm Kulthum. These were the family members of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So he was the best to tread the earth after the prophets. He was the first to accept Islam from amongst the men. He was the first person to be persecuted after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding Islam. He was the first person to stand up in defense of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the first person to invite others to Islam. He was the first person to get up and announce Islam openly. He was the first person who spent his wealth in order to serve Islam by freeing those who were being persecuted. He was also the most, he was the most brave from amongst the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is an instance in one, one of the battles when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum had said, who will stand in defense of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And before anyone could actually get there, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was there. And he said, who dare come close to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when I am standing here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us some bravery at least. He was the most loved man by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu once asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is most loved to you from all the people? He said Aisha radiallahu anha. Now that was a woman, that was his wife, that was the daughter of Abu Bakr. So Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu decided to continue with the question. Who next? Who do you love after her? He said, Abuha, her father. That is Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. That means from amongst the men, the most loved by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Abdullah ibn Uthman or Abdullah ibn Abi Quhafah, also known as Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his love. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam truly. He was also a person whose conviction was so powerful, the most powerful from amongst the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any time revelation came, he was the first to surrender. He was the first to surrender to it. And he knew if this is the revelation, there is no speech that I have thereafter. This is what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who can surrender to the truth as well. Then we have a person who was the first to gather the Quran together. Gathering the Quran together means when the Quran was revealed, it was revealed in the hearts, the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He recited it to the people and they memorized it. The technology at the time was not little chipsticks that we have today. It was not little CDs and nano sticks that we have today. No. It was not even the computer, the typewriter. No, it was not even books. People were unlettered mostly, but it was memory. People would actually memorize absolutely everything and they would know it even more accurately than we would had we written books. Because in our books, we have mistakes, we have errors. But with them, they knew completely and accurately exactly what was said. That was the in thing at the time. So they had memorized it between them and they used to teach each other and they used to sit with each other. But one of the battles that took place or the battles that took place at the time of the beginning of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu's tenure, what we find is some of those who had memorized the Quran were martyred. So Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu decided to appoint Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu and told him, O oh Zayd, 
I would like you to gather this Quran from the hearts of the people and from the various other parchments and leather skins and wooden pieces and various other places that they have all put it. And we'd like to start gathering it. So he was the first to start the gathering of the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can read from the fruits of what these people have done. Today we have it so easily in book form in front of us, but we are still lazy to read it. My brothers and sisters, let us try and complete the recitation of the Quran in this month of Ramadan and look into the entire meaning of the whole Quran during this beautiful month. May Allah make it easy for us and may He accept it from us. Then we have Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. There was one of the major incidents that for me is one of the most touching moments that I have read regarding Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. It is a narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu wherein he says once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asking some questions. And you know the questions he was asking related to goodness that was done on that day. So he asked the companions who from amongst you is fasting today. And it was an ordinary day. So from amongst those who answered Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said I am fasting. Then he said who from amongst you has assisted in the burial of a Muslim today. From amongst them, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, I did so, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Same day. Who from amongst you has fed a poor person charitable deed today? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, I have done. Who from amongst you has visited a sick person today? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, I have done. Subhanallah. So he was the only one who had gathered absolutely everything that was asked on that particular day. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever has done all of these things today shall enter paradise. Subhanallah. What a man. And this is why he was known as from amongst the Ashara. The Ashara means there were 10 people who were told in person, you are from paradise. So the names, inshallah, we will go through them over the next few days. But Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was always at the top of the list. Always. Go and see the list anywhere you want. The first name is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was told on more than one occasion that for you is paradise. That did not make him arrogant. It did not make him a person who just started doing what he wanted. He was still worried and concerned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless every single one of us. Now we want to start off this evening with the life of the next greatest to tread the earth after Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. And he was none other than Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. I want to make mention of a very few points, very few points, inshallah, before we close for today, so that tomorrow we can look forward to the life of this great warrior. He was a man who was feared. He was 13 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember this. So when prophethood was granted to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Omar ibn al-Khattab was only 27 years old. He was young. He was feared. He was known as the ambassador of Quraysh. He was sent to other places to give the message of Quraysh across to other regions and other parts of the peninsula. And whenever there were difficulties and problems and the position of Quraysh had to be explained, they sent Umar. He was a strong man, powerful. He was well spoken and very, very feared. And he was a, as a young man, he had a very, very, a very, in fact, a life that was full of what I would term today, the fast lane. You know, today, if you say someone is on the fast lane, what does that mean? I had to pause for a moment because out of respect of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, we don't want to use low terms. But out of explaining to you that he was involved in a lot of what today's misguided youth would actually be involved in. We would not be wrong to say that because he says it himself. He says that he was a womanizer and he was a, an alcoholic of note. He used to drink so much and he used to worship the idols just like everybody else did. So much so that he made his own idols and he worshipped them. That was the man. But the reason why I'm making mention of this is to show you and I, my brothers and sisters, that if Allah wills goodness and if you have goodness in your heart, no matter what you've done in the past and no matter what muck you might be in right now, there is always hope for you. This man was furthest away from the teachings of Islam. Something struck and immediately he turned to Islam. We will come to the exact details of what happened. 
This man hated Islam and the Muslims. When he heard of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had so much hatred that everyone who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to, he would quietly go afterwards and tell them, watch out, you better not listen to this man. You watch out. He had a slave girl whom he used to harm from morning to evening solely because she accepted the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the man, the womanizer, the one who was an alcoholic known as Umar ibn al-Khattab. Where did the change come? How did it come? And why did it come? Inshallah, we will speak about that tomorrow. He is one of our heroes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the following of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu in his days of Islam. And may Allah unite us with him and with the others in paradise. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.